All right. Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whenever you are up watching this, and you should be watching this, and you should be telling your friends, my name is Will Austin of FightBackMedia.com, FightBackMedia.com, FightBackMedia.com. And I have a extremely special guest, a good friend, I almost said old friend, but I know that that's not the word to use, a really good friend from some time previous, um, Ms. Melanie, Ms. Melanie Collette of um, Money Talk with Melanie. Because right now, life is about arithmetic, friends. It's about arithmetic. If you bought gas yesterday, you know doggone well, it's about arithmetic. If, if you have an electric bill that comes in with your name on it, it's about arithmetic. Um, and I wanted to get somebody who was really good about that kind of stuff on so you're just not listening to me. Melanie, it is so good to see you again. It's been a bit. It's been too long. It's been since the hour of power. It's been too long. How have you been? It's Certainly has. I've been great. It's so good to see you. I was like, Willie, can I come on the show for Willie Lawson? Absolutely. Yes, I, I appreciate can. that. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. I appreciate that. Um, right now, uh, I don't know what it costs where you live, but we I, I went to work yesterday and came back and gas prices had, in, had increased by about 25, 25 cents at every gas station I went to. I didn't have time to do the arithmetic. But the, the, the percentage increase was, was pretty significant. And the first thing I thought about was that the average household, how it, how it was going to impact them. Now, I know so the elite, eh, they don't care um, because they have electric cars. Anyway, that's another point. Um, knowing what you know about budgeting and households, because that's what you do, and your, and your season, tax season is about to come up. I know. You're about to, y'all about to get lit. Uh, um, yep. How is this affecting what, what, what the government calls flyover America and regular piece of people's households? Well, you know, gas is a, a legitimate bill that you include in your budget if you have to tra do some significant travel for work. I'm very fortunate right now. My, my secular job, I have a very close commute. It's like a three minute commute, but I used to travel an hour and drive an SUV. So that was, you know, a $200 a month nut. I cannot imagine with the gas prices like they are today with an SUV, how much my gas would cost, probably in the realm of $400. But that's something that you would have to absolutely budget. So it is not a small thing when you see that that two or that one in, in, as the first number pop up to a four. That's very serious business. When you're trying to budget and take care of kids and buy groceries and things like that, it's, it, and and here's the thing about gas: it's not just gas. What does gas fuel? Gas fuels trucks. Gas fuels airplanes. That what do trucks do? Trucks bring your groceries to the grocery store. Who pays for that? that those things, the people, the farmers. Or the, the, you know what I mean? So the cost of those goods are going to go up and be passed on to the customers. So that is going to make overall inflation go up. So it's not just gas. That's the problem. Not to mention the many things that are made from petroleum, like plastic. So all of your plastic goods, those prices are going to go up. So it's a very serious thing when we talk about the price of gas going up. We're not just talking about your travel budget. We're talking about a whole lot of other things that are rolling downhill. So when Kamala Harris and, P and Pete Buttigieg get on a, a, a joint press conference and talk about how this may be a, a, a good thing in some sense because the roads will be less congested and people will be able to take mass transit and, we'll, and, and, and really start to move the country towards um, green initiatives and the like. How out of touch are these people? Not in touch at all. And good for whom? And how much does your electric bill? I mean, they are approaching this like children do, like high school kids do. You know, I, when, one of the things that I teach is economics and financial literacy. And one of the most enlightening exercises I do with my students has to do with budgeting and actually writing down the numbers. And when they see that you actually have to subtract dollars from your budget <laughs> like that's what? actually how that works that you have a set amount of dollars and money has to come 
from that. That's how Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg are uh, are approaching this situation. Because, okay, let's say you have an electric car. Well, how does that affect your electric bill? Like your electric bill is going to go up. Like you, we have to approach these things like grownups. Can you afford the extra expense of the extra, extra electric bill? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. Can, can people afford to have portable um, electric, whatever, whatever it is you use to plug in an, an electric car? Do you have the extra time to charge your electric car? I don't know about you, Willie, but time is money. Time is money. Time you is know, very, my, very, very my, my valuable. Time costs. Can you can can <laughs> you afford to pay me that time that I'm going to lose charging my car? I can barely keep my phone charged, and now I have to charge up my car before I go somewhere. Come on, I now. got about seventeen. I got about seventeen percent, um, and I stay exactly. around twenty. And I have chargers. I have chargers everywhere. Everywhere. One in my car. One next to my bed. One at work. Just to make sure that I always have juice. What am I going to do on. with my car? Yeah, it, it takes about even with the Tesla, it takes about eight hours to get a full charge, and you get about and you get about three hundred miles. I mean, it goes one hundred and forty-five miles an hour. So hell yeah, I want one, but it's just not smart. That is not when a even business. Elon Musk says that we have to think about making sure that we are energy self-sufficient with gas and oil, and that's directly opposite of what you think his business is. But Elon's being the adult here; he knows how his vehicles work. Because that's what adults do. What? Adults who, adults who have sense and adults who have some kind of like core values about themselves. They, they, they're they honest and they tell the truth. And, and also Elon Musk is, is very, very smart. So you have that, that combination. You have someone who's very, very smart, who has value and actually cares about mankind and Americans in general. So he goes ahead and tells the absolute truth, and, you know, which is that tweet he uh, tweeted, I think it was over the weekend, and said, I hate to say this, but we need to quit the, the, the Russian uh, oil and we need to start uh, digging over here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you know, and there are, just, and there are a lot very of very wise words, a lot, a lot of lies being told about um, American energy policy and the like. And, and, and when we get we get a chance. We'll talk about those, too. I want to uh, I want to go home on this because I know this is an interest for me. This is a very very interesting topic um, because we saw Occupy Wall Street turn into BLM, and BLM is kind of I don't know maybe they're hanging out with Dr. Fauci. Well, you know I can't seem to find any of them. Been having some um, record keeping difficulties <laughs> with their finances. You know, when you collect millions and millions of dollars, you know, what one of the lessons I mentioned earlier that I teach uh, financial literacy, mm -hmm. one of the lessons that I have is on philanthropy and identifying reputable charities. And there are some identifiers and some things that you need to check out when identifying reputable charities, how transparent they are about their spending, things that they have accomplished. In other words, what have they done with their money that is tangible, that is public, that you can see what, what are the positive things that, that they've done with their money? Um, how transparent are they with their financial records? Things of that nature. And, and it, it appears that I believe that they haven't filed their taxes since like 2020 or they're having a very hard time getting that record keeping together. And when, when you are dealing with other people's money and particularly talking about donations, um, you need to have that situation straight. And BLM has been having some issues. At the same time, people who are running BLM are not having financial issues, which is kind of, you know, they are have it living fabulously while the Fine organization, se yes, seems to be having some financial and record keeping issues. That is not a really good combination of things that should be going on simultaneously. You, so you've you had would think people not. resign. So I think that maybe that's why um, BLM's been a little quiet lately. Because like we talked about right before we started, we talked about that this 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 crisis right now um, really affects black and brown people 
um, really hard because of the limited income and all the things that black and brown people in this country have to deal with. Um, having their energy bill, whether it's a car or electricity or heating their homes or cooling their homes or lighting their homes, crank up 25, 30%, literally overnight is devastating to those families. More so than, uh, than, than others, especially the white liberal elites, to be honest. Um, and I would think this is a perfect thing for BLM and all of those organizations. Where the hell is Al Sharpton? Where the hell and is Al Sharpton? It's got to be raising hell. Have you ever seen one of those charging stations? Do you live yes. in an area where I, yes. I live near one too? Uh, where are you going to put them? That's the other thing. Like, where <laughs> I know they have all this money. Where are you putting all these trucks? I, I, and I'm waiting for the video on YouTube for the first fight to break out. You think people fight over uh, parking spots? Wait till somebody's car about to die. You think people fight over phone chargers? Wait till somebody's <laughs> car is about to die. And they're trying to get one of those charging stations. Yeah, because most of the, the biggest one I've seen is in the parking lot of a, of a plaza. And there's like 10. And it's huge. They take up. They're big. They take up room. Take up a lot of space. And there's some infrastructure that has to be built, obviously. Um, so I don't know. Um, and until that technology is such that it is not that big a deal to do, it's not right. something you can depend on. And telling people that they can, that, that, that don't worry about gas prices, just go buy an electric car. Sorry, Jen Circleback Saki. That's not a good thing to tell people. That's not being helpful. Like, I don't even think you can buy a used one. Is there even any data no, there is, on? There is no used Tesla data because the battery degrades over time, which is why you can't go to a dealership and see a bunch of them on the lot. Because as they sit, the battery degrades. It's not right. possible. So it's like getting a bagel. You got to get that bad boy fresh. <laughs> no, thank you. You got to no, get that bad no. boy fresh because the longer it sits the harder it gets, the worse it gets. So unless it's fresh, right from the factory to you, it doesn't exist. So nope. thank you for your $104,000 and that battery made of lithium mined by the hands of African children. Oh, don't don't get me started. <laughs> okay, I won't. All right, listen. <laughs> Mel <laughs> Melanie, on that one. <laughs> we, we got to get out of here. Going to end right there. And maybe that'll be enough to get you back for the next time. Um, I, I, I could possibly do that. <laughs> well, thank you ever so much, Melanie, for coming in to visit. Tell people how they can get a hold of you and all the stuff you do because you busy. You busy, honey. You busy. I'm always, I'm so busy. Never too busy for Willie Lawson, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> my show, you can find my show. It's actually on Terrestrial Radio now as well as a podcast. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's on 98.7 <laughs> The Coast, which if you don't live in the New Jersey area, you can get online at 98.7 at thecoast.com. Just Google 98.7 The Coast. You can listen online or you can catch the podcast by following any of my social media at Money Talk Mel on Twitter uh, at NJGOP Diva or any of the uh, Money Talk with Melanie uh, social media. And uh, Newsmax at 3.30 on American Agenda, uh, usually every Monday. Outstanding. Well, thank you again. Thank you again. I am honored. You are you are amazing, and it's always wonderful talking to you. So we got to get out You're of here. You're very kind. Thank and you I'm, for having me. I appreciate no it. No worry. And, and get back and give that dog some attention, because that dog is mad at you. Uh, he is. He's, back, he's back there being really good, just like <laughs> threatening to bark. He's being really, <laughs> being really good. <laughs> I appreciate it. Melanie, take care. Again, thanks everybody for coming. Um, again, you can you, you, you can hear the Fightback Media um, stuff at fightbackmedia.com, fightbackmedia.com, fightbackmedia.com on the Morning Report and the Speakeasy. Speakeasy is our late night show where we play good stuff. We go ahead and play some of that bootleg music. You know that bootleg stuff on the Speakeasy. All right now. So, so until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.